as it'll be Dalton Sutherland taking the opening face off for the Chippewas. He's now out there with St. Andre and Taraski. A little bit of a change there as Puck has dropped, tied up in some feet right now, and the Timberwolves come out with it. They chip it deep in the Chippewa zone. Gabe Smith goes back to get it. He gets hit by Dundor. Hayes with it now. He tries to backhand up to St. Andre. Back to Hayes. Cross ice pass. Smith with it. He launches a long pass up to Taraski. We have a breakaway here. Taraski go makes a move, shoots, and he scores. Just 24 seconds into this one, Taraski puts the Chippewas up one to nothing. It was a great pass. I believe was it Gabe Smith with the pass. Gabe Smith found Jacob Taraski up ice. Taraski found it and just fooled the goaltender. I mean, made a beautiful deke move right in front and basically was able to just slide it in on the backhand. Great start for the Chippewas in this one. And back to the center faceoff circle we go and the Chippewas win this one, but it goes all the way back into their own zone as Smith has to play it over to Hayes. Hayes back to Smith behind the net. He works it up the boards. Timberwolves barely able to hold the zone there, but they do, and St. Andre picks it up along the hash marks. He makes a good move around a forward there, but he gets met at the blue line by Stutzman, and mm. back in the zone we go. And I believe we're going to have a penalty here. It's on St. Andre. I believe it's going to be a, it's either a hook or a hold. Yeah, he, the official hasn't signaled anything yet for it. And he's going to go for a hook. Yeah, it was a good call. It could have been a hook, could have been a hold, but he grabbed him enough where, where the winger for Northwood just couldn't get that separation that he had at the beginning of that play, and it, and it just it enforced St. Andre to kind of grab him, and it forced the power play for Northwood. Chippewas won the faceoff off that penalty kill and iced it all the way down. The Timberwolves coming down now. They have a three-on-two heading into the Chippewa zone. Cross-ice pass to Hensley. Hensley, backdoor, score! Nick, we talked about it pregame. We might see a different kind of game being played here in a high scoring one, and already a minute three into this one, it's a 1 1 game. Yeah, and that goal came from number five, Aaron Owen, off the feed from Matt Hensley. And yeah, we got a 1 1 game with still 18.57 left. That was also a power play goal for the Timberwolves. Yeah, so a power play for the Timberwolves that is only at 9.3%, scores only 17 seconds into their first power play, and they're one for one. Chippewa is forcing some pressure now. Now they're at even strength. Laporte with it. He makes a move, tries to get a pass up to Dundor, but it hits him in the skates. It heads right back behind the net. Sleeper with it now. He works up the boards. Intercepted there by Porzondek, who's back in the game tonight. Chris Martin in a foot race for it, and that one will go for an icing. It looked like Dundor might have had the race won there, but the Chippewas will take it as they head all the way back to the other end. Three shots in all in this game, Nick. We've had two goals, and one of the shots from the Chippewas was on that icing clear attempt at the start. <laughs> so really, we've had two shots and two goals, one apiece from each team here. Simon Selly will be taking this one for the Chippewas. He'll be going up against LaRue. Puck is dropped, the Chippewas win it. Porzonic dumps it back deep. LaRue and Simon Selly battling for it in the corner. Dundor jumps in there with Jeanette, still battling for it as it spits out to Chris Martin. Chris Martin launches a shot from the blue line, Ooh. stopped in front there by Reed. Simon Selly takes a hit, back behind the net is Porzonic. He tries to pass out front, and the Timberwolves clear it out, and this one should go for an icing, and it will. And Nick, I didn't catch this pregame or anything, but I think Brendan Nelson is out of this game for the Chippewas as Taroski started on that line one, and then Porzonic being back in the game as well. So it looks like Brendan Nelson taking the day off here for the Chippewas. Yeah, not a bad idea. I mean, he did he did play very, very well yesterday. Picked up a four-point night, a goal, and three assists. But I mean, not a bad idea to sit one of your best players here for a game that you're confident you're going to win. Hayes with it. He tries to cross ice pass over to Simon Selly, and he barely manages to get it, but then it's taken by Sleeper and back into the Timberwolves zone and now is Dundor. He tries to cross ice pass over to his defensive partner and he tries to get it up to Sleeper. This one's gonna go for yet another icing call. There's three icings in about a minute for the Timberwolves. Yeah, 17.41 left here in this first period. It's tied up at one. And yeah, you basically just said what I was about to say. A lot of <laughs> icing so far here from Northwood. And you know, I don't know if they're looking for the stretch passes or just trying to quickly get it out of their zone, but it's not working. Philip Fazio taking this one for the Chippewas. Puck is dropped, the Timberwolves come out with it. 
Sleeper tries to backhand up to break out. LaRue picks it up, gets the pass up to Dundor. Dundor coming in. He's got McCarthy in the slot. Good defensive play there by Thomas to break it up. Smith battling for it with Lou. Spits back out to the point. Sleeper lays a hit on Fazio. Nobody goes down, though, and the Timberwolves remain in possession. Smith with it now behind the net. He moves up. He's looking for a passing lane. Can't find it, but he'll drive it back for Fazio. Fazio decides to wrap it all the way back around his own net where Hayes picks it up. Hayes tries the long stretch pass. It wasn't caught, but it was on net, so it will not be an icing as Reed plays it up the boards. Picked up there by Thomas. He takes a hit in the corner. Spits back out of the point lane. Suki with it. He'll launch a shot through traffic. Knocked down in front. Agnello with a second opportunity. Couldn't get all the way through. Noah Thomas back out to Lansuki. Lansuki cocks back a slap shot. Gets it stolen by LaRue. You know, you have Stutzman coming in, but great defensive play there by Thomas as he goes off for a change. Agnello and Fazio come in. Fazio launches a shot. Saved there by Reed. And it looks like we're going to have another penalty coming up here. It's got to be against Northwood. And it is. Looks like it's number 29, or 25, excuse me, going to the box. Yeah, that'll be Ben Budnick paying for the box for the Timberwolves. So 16.36 left here in the first. Chippewas will head to their first power play. I didn't see the signal from the official on what oh, the call I, I was. I didn't either, I didn't either. But nonetheless, it'll be a Chippewa power play. So Chippewas win the face off. A shot by Martin in traffic, shooting, trying to stuff it in, they can't. Hensley's able to clear it out, and Sutherland has to drop all the way back to his own zone to regroup. Sutherland curves back up. He tries to connect with the pass to St. Andre, and he does. He drops it there for Taraski. Taraski loops back around into his own zone. He then drops it to Sutherland, and Sutherland's coming in through the neutral zone with a full head of steam. Sutherland enters the zone, goes into the slot area, tries to get a shot off, but knocked down in front there. Back out to the point now is Brennan Martin. He rips a shot through traffic, saved there by Reed, bouncing in front. Nobody can manage to find it, but St. Andre ends up with it in the corner. St. Andre still battling for it there as Northwood's able to clear it out. And now Martin's in a foot race with Stutzman trying to get back to it. And Martin will win the race and take it around his own net. Hensley forcing pressure. Martin connects with Taroski. Taroski with it now. Enters the neutral zone looking for a passing lane, but he's going to take it all by himself. Trotsky enters the zone, wraps it around the net, looking for Lansuki on the other side, but it goes all the way out to the point where Brennan Martin picks it up and dumps it deep for Sutherland. Sutherland with it now, deep. Saucer pass out to Martin in the slot area. Shot, hit a body in front, but Martin's able to pick up the bounce and unable to keep it in the zone there with Sutherland. 40 seconds remaining on this Chippewa power play. Really good pressure here. They just haven't been able to create or get, they've only gotten two on net, even though they've taken about five shots. Sutherland back over to St. Andre. St. Andre tries to make a move, but it's too much that he can handle. Porzonic's able to hold the zone after an attempted clear, and his shot goes wide. Behind the net now is Sutherland. He's surrounded by Timberwolves. Gets it over to St. Andre. Puck goes up in the air. Sleeper paws it down to himself, but knocked back in by St. Andre. Sutherland's trying to get a pass out front, but he's unable to because of good defense by Dundor. St. Andre with it now on the outside. He tries to pass across to nobody there. Timberwolves breaking out. They got Hensley deep ready for the breakaway. The missed pass, that won't be an icing because it was on the final seconds of a penalty kill. And Colin Smith will cover this one up. Both teams now back to full strength with 14.33 to go here in the first period. Still tied at one. So unlike Northwood's first power play, the Chippewas cannot capitalize. It'll remain one to one here. I want to go back a couple of minutes though. Noah Thomas had a great shift for the Chippewas, Nick. He deflected one out in front of his own net in that slot area, made a couple plays in the neutral zone to knock it free as well. And I mean, all around, it was a really good sh shift for Noah Thomas. Now I said in my pregame, one of the things I said in my pregame was to say both LaRue brothers are actually still in this game, even though Justin LaRue was ejected yesterday. Not 100% sure what the story is there, but both LaRue brothers are in as Simon Selly takes a big hit but gets the puck in the zone. Jared Lou battling for it in the corner with Simon Selly, picked up there by McCarthy. And McCarthy's coming in, and he's got Justin LaRue with him. Clearly offsides there were the Timberwolves, but the refs give him a break. And now there's a huge battle for it along the far side boards. Three or four oh. Chippewas over there as a shot goes wide. Picked up on the other side by LaRue. He's getting pressured by two Chippewas. Smith and Jeanette in there battling for it. A third Chippewa comes in. Jeanette comes out with it, tries a backhand clear, but picked up there. And we're going to have a Timberwolves penalty here. 
I, I actually, I don't know if it was just a whistle or if both will go to the box. I mean, Simon Selly got his face mask grabbed in the corner, almost taken down WWE style from behind, <laughs> and there was no call. And I actually believe it might only be Simon Selly heading to the box. But it was a terrible no, miscall call in the McCarthy's car. McCarthy's going as well. Okay, I mean, but the initial call was, it was a terrible miscall call in the corner there. The Timberwolves should have been going to the box first, but now it'll be, I believe, a four on four play. Faceoff will remain in the Chippewa zone. It'll be to the right of Colin Smith. It'll be Philip Fazio taking it for the Chippewas. So we have four on four hockey here for the next two minutes. 13.45 remaining here in the first period of play. Still tied at one. Sleeper with it at the point. He drops it to Stutzman. Stutzman can't do anything with it. The Chippewas thought they were going to have a break there, but they have to regroup back in their own zone. Smith with it now. He works his way across the red line, decides to dump it deep. It's man on the other side there by Laporte. He gets pressured by Fazio and Ignello, and he has to make a pass out to the neutral zone. Smith rushing back to get it. He's getting pressured by two Timberwolves, and he just selects to dump it around. Isn't that where Hayes picks it up on the other side? Hayes with it now, moving it up through the neutral zone, taking it all by himself, which he doesn't do very often. He'll elect to dump it in after that. Fazio now battling for it in the corner with two Timberwolves. Ignello looking like he's going to go in to help, but doesn't. Smith with it at the point. He rips a shot, easily sticked away there by Reed. Sleeper with it now coming up. He's getting pressured by Fazio and then taken away by Fazio as Lansuki picks it up and dumps it back in. Agnello with it. He's got a one-on-one -on -one moving into the Timberwolves zone as he can't handle it. It goes behind the net. Agnello battling there with Stutzman as Stutzman's able to clear it around to Sleeper. Sleeper with it. He's carrying it all the way down by himself. He did that a lot yesterday. It's a one-on-three heading into the Chippewa zone as Lansuki forces him to the outside and makes him go around the net. Sleeper cuts back and makes the pass back out to Budnick. Budnick does a cross-ice pass over to Owen. Owen shoots. Blocker save there by Smith. St. Andre tries to get it out, but Budnick's able to pinch and hold the zone there. Budnick rips an odd-angle shot, misses Ooh. wide. That took a really weird bounce off the backboards. Almost hopped right in front of the net of Smith. Taraski's coming in in a two-on-three with St. Andre. He has to peel back. Lansuki comes in to screen the goaltender. St. Andre shoots easily gloved away there by Reed. St. Andre with it now. Passes it over to Lansuki. Lansuki in the high slot area. He makes a move. He tries to backhand pass. Backdoor scores! Taraski second of the game already. Yeah, and that'll be Taraski coming in on the four-on-four. -four. There are three seconds left in that four-on-four -four play there. But great feed from Lansuki, great shot by Taraski, and the Chippewas are up 2-1 to one here with 11.54 to go in the first period of play. Taraski came into this game in six games played with only two goals. He's already got two in this one, just over eight minutes into it with 11.54. Chippewas take that 2-1 lead. Puck is dropped, Timberwolves with it, now it's Sleeper. He just decides to dump it in. Both teams now back to five-on-five -five hockey. Martin with it behind the net. He decides to drop it back over to Chris Martin. Martin now battling for it. It spits out, but he comes out with the possession. He'll try to clear the zone. Great defense there by Dundor to hold the line, though. Now they have it out in the slot area. It's McCarthy. He rips a shot right off the post, and that one will go back into the corner. McCarthy picks up his own shot, tries to send it deep, but Brennan Martin's there to stop it. He gets the cross-ice pass over to Watch. Wadge moves it out. He tries to pass up to McComas. Still goes into the zone, but McComas is unable to pick it up. Moore rushes across the ice to get to it. Tries to pass out front. Brittany Martin with a shot there. Stopped by Reed. Moore just decides to send, send it deep as he's replacing Martin's spot up at the blue line. And the Timberwolves coming out with it now. Dundor with it. He just decides to dump it in. He'll go off for a change. Martin getting pressured by Laporte. Chris Martin with it now. He tries to pass up to McComas, but McComas actually stepped on the puck and slipped a little bit there, but managed to stay on his feet. Tim Wolves with it now. LaRue's right in the slot area, poked away there by Brennan Martin, but he gets a second oh. attempt that goes wide. Picked up by St. Andre. Tries to chip it up to McComas, but it's held, on, held in by the Timberwolves. LaRue with it now. He rips a shot. That one misses high and wide. Chris Martin with it. He'll chip it up the boards. Picked up by Wadge. Wadge tries to cross ice pass over to St. Andre. St. Andre will dump it in as the entire Chippewa line besides St. Andre goes off for a change. 
Sandra forcing a lot of pressure there to keep it in the zone. Tries to catch Taraski in the high slot area, but unable to. And now we're battling for it along the near side boards. Justin LaRue with it now, connects with the pass to Sleeper. Sleeper's got Carter with him coming in on a two on three, but it's taken away by Hayes. Hayes tries to connect with Sutherland, but he's unable to, and Budnick clears it back in. Stopped at the blue line by Hayes, back up to Sutherland. Sutherland moves into the attacking zone. He's getting pressured by two Timberwolves. He drops it back for Taraski. Taraski carries it in, makes a move. Almost was able to catch the hat trick there, but missed wide. Timberwolves, Justin LaRue with it now. He'll carry it all the way through the neutral zone. He's got Carter with him. He tries to drive it back to Carter, but unable to. And now the Chippewas have a rush on a two-on-two -two heading the other way. Three-on-two, excuse me. Back over to Taraski. Taraski back across, sticked away there by Reed. Carter battling for it over there with Budnick and Sutherland. The St. Andre is able to hold the line. Timberwolves with it now in their own zone. We have a delayed penalty to the Chippewas. This play is blown dead. So the Chippewas will be heading to another penalty kill here with 9.09 remaining here. And it's going to be St. Andre once again. He's already been in the box once tonight, just 46 seconds into this one. He's got, his wa he's got to watch his mouth a little bit too there because he got a little aggressive with the, uh, with the official as he was kind of mouthing him off as he skated to the penalty box. But I believe it's going to be an interference call against St. Andre. Puck is dropped in the Chippewa zone, one by Hensley. Back to Sleeper, back over to Hensley at the point. Porzanic forcing pressure with Simon Selly over to Dundor. Dundor with it, he'll pass it deep to Owen. Back across to Hensley. Hensley tries to go back door there, but unable to. Simon Selly picks it up and is able to get a nice clear out just 20 seconds into this Chippewa penalty kill. For a power play that's under 10%, they almost just went two for two to start the day. Only 20 seconds into this one. Chippewa's receiving a benefit there. Oh, Big boy. hit there by Lansuki. Right on Owen. Owen pops right back up, but way to take away the scoring threat there was Lansuki as he goes off for a change now. Two Nick. big hits this weekend, Nick. Yeah, definitely caught him. Kind of a suicide pass kind of way. We got a three-on-one coming in now for the Timberwolves. They try a cross-ice pass, unable to get it over to Sleeper. Back out to the point. Shot there by LaRue, easily saved in the butterfly by Smith. That was Chris Martin tried to clear it out, but held in by Dundor. Back over to Simon Selly. He tries to cross ice clear and he gets it. Sleever picks it up at his own blue line. 57 seconds to go in this Chippewa penalty kill. Sleeper moves in now. He'll drive it back to Stutzman. Stutzman with it. He goes to the high slot area with Hensley. He tries to rip a shot through traffic but hit away by Chippewa. Hensley clears it back up the boards, back up to Sleeper at the point. He'll drop it to Stutzman. Stutzman with it, goes deep to Hensley behind the net. Tries to pass out front to Jared LaRue, but again, a good stick lift there by Chris Martin he lays, as he lays a body. Hensley with it now, working his way along the perimeter. Back up to the point. Dundor with it now. He tries a shot, knocked away by Agnello. Chris Martin with a hard clear around, but that one's going to be held in there by Naraki at the point as Naraki just sends it back to Hensley. Intercepted there by Brennan Martin, and a nice clear by him. And that'll almost do it for this penalty kill as there's only 12 seconds left on this Chippewa penalty kill, and that one will go for an icing as Naraki failed to complete the pass. So we have six seconds left in this Chippewa penalty kill. Chippewas has a lead two to one, 7.15 to go here in the first period. Chippewas defense really playing well. They've only allowed two shots on net so far to Northwood. And for once, I mean, they're up in the shot category 11 to two, which is <laughs> kind of unheard of for the Chippewas this season. It'll be Jared LaRue facing off against Dalton Sutherland as the puck is dropped. Sutherland now battling for it. Finally gets it out of the faceoff circle with Budnick and he'll connect with Hensley on the other side. Back to Naraki. Naraki tries to stretch pass up to the LaRue, and he gets it. A one on three heading in. McCarthy kind of on the back door, but the Chippewas end up with it. St. Andre could have gone right back to the box for a hook there. <laughs> Taraski connects with Sutherland at the far blue line. Sutherland moves in, looking for a passing lane, tries to cross his pass to Taraski, unable to as he almost stuffed it in there back door, but Reed was able to stop that. Hensley had it at the blue line, connects with McCarthy. McCarthy coming in, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. He makes a beautiful move around Hayes, backhand right into the chest of Colin Smith, and he'll hang on to that one for a face-off. Really good track there by Colin Smith to follow that one the whole way as Charlie Hayes really just got beat once Northwood entered the Chippewa zone. And, you know, I just talked about the Chippewa's defense have been pretty solid. They are taking a lot more chances than I feel like we normally see from this Chippewa team. A lot of presses at the Northwood's blue line, and we've seen Northwood have a few odd man rushes, but fortunately for them so far, they've been able to get back and knock it away. Face-off one there by Northwood. Dundor rips a shot gloved away there by Colin Smith. 
Bolger gets the rebound as he makes the backhand pass over to Lansuki. Lansuki with it now. Cross ice pass up to St. Andres. St. Andres almost met with the body of sleeper, but he works his way around him. He's heading in. He tries to cross ice pass it to Roski, almost getting the third goal of the game, but misses wide, unable to handle the puck. Nice hit there by Bolger. Stops the progress of the Timberwolves, and Lansuki picks it up at his own blue line. Lansuki with it now, rims it off the glass. As it's picked up there by Sullen, he's got one man to beat, which is Sleeper. He tries to pass out front to St. Andre, but it was behind him, unable to get it. LaRue picks it up there for the Timberwolves. Lansuki lays another hit there on Dundor, roughing him off the puck, but the Timberwolves still come out with it. Laporte with it now. He'll try to carry it in. He chips it past Lansuki and trying to rush deep as he'll meet Bolger behind the net. Bolger passes up to Lansuki along the boards. Lansuki with it now. He'll carry it all the way through the neutral zone by himself, and he'll rip a long-range shot on net, saved there by Reed. And he'll cover it up Ooh. with 5.36 remaining here. As Lansuki... Northwood just picked up a penalty. Yes, yeah, Lansuki kind of gets ran about three seconds after the play there. And it looks like it's going to be Sleeper heading to the box. Not sure what Lansuki did to kind of get under his skin there, but Sleeper kind of laid one on Lansuki. So the Timberwolves will now go to a five-on-four penalty kill for two minutes as Sleeper picked up the roughing call. Yeah, he actually just tripped them behind the net way after the whistle. It was kind of an odd play. It's something you don't always see, but, you know, it was it was a big enough trip where the ref was able to notice it and call it right away. Sometimes when you get those little trips behind the net after whistle, they go uncalled. Simon Selly taking this one for the Chippewas, and he'll win it. Guy back to Jeanette. Jeanette cannot connect with Chris Martin, and he'll have to chase it all the way back to his own zone. He connects with Hayes in front of his own net. Cross ice pass back over to Martin. Martin with it now, he makes a move. Tries to get it back up to Hayes. Hayes kind of jumping in with the offense here. Hayes moves back up to his point and just dumps it deep as there was no passing lanes for him. Simon Selle picks it up behind the net. He makes a move there. He's battling with a Rocky back out front with Jeanette. He kind of lost it back to Chris Martin. He rips a shot. I believe that hit a stick out front and went wide. Chris Martin with it now. He rips a long range shot easily kicked away there by Reed. Hensley with it now, one-on-one -on -one heading in. He's got Hayes, Stutzman's jumping in, turns into a two-on-one cross-ice pass. Good play there by Hayes to stick that puck away, interrupt that pass. Porzonic with it now in the neutral zone. He tries to leave it for Hayes, but it was just out of his reach. Almost connected with Simon Selling on the far side. Timberwolves try to connect on a pass with Hensley near the Chippewa blue line, but it actually hits the official skates, ends up on the stick of Brennan Martin. Martin makes Owen miss. Makes Hensley miss. He carries it in all by himself. Tries to make a move around a defenseman. Goes in. Good poke check there by Reed to interrupt the play. Porzonic back behind the net. He tries to pass out front to St. Andre. He's with it. He rips a shot and he scores. <laughs> Jacob St. Andre making it 3-1 to one for the Chippewas. Coming in on the power play there. You know, it was a dangerous decision by St. Andre too because he actually stepped all the way back from the point down into that slot area. I believe it was Hensley just sitting at the blue line of Northwood zone. If Northwood could have got the clear, Hensley would have been gone on a breakaway. St. Andre took the chance to step up. It obviously worked out for the Chippewas and now they lead 3-1 with 4.17 left here in the first. And Suki with it now off the draw. Bolger with it. He gets with the pass with St. Andre. We have another rush coming in. He's just got to beat Sleeper and Sleeper's able to get, it off, get him off the puck. Lansuki with it. He tries to connect with Bolger, but Sutherland actually ends up with it, and Sutherland will just give it right back to Lansuki. Just under four minutes to go here in this first period of play. Taraski with it. Now he enters his own, gets the pass over to St. Andre, tries to get it back to Taraski, but Sleeper's there with a the good stick lift. Taraski stood no chance to catch that one. Lansuki holds his own well, gets a shot on goal, blocked away there by Reed. Slap shot by Bolger, held on by Reed as it hit him right in the chest, and he'll hang on to it for a faceoff. 341 left here. The recent power play goal by the Chippewas has increased the lead to 3 to 1. So the Chippewas now 1 for 2 on the power play. St. Andre picked up the goal. Taraski's got two goals as well so far here for the Chippewas in this one. Faceoff will be coming to the right side of Reed. It'll be McComas taking this one as he gets kicked out of the faceoff circle. So it'll be Blasky taking this one for the Chippewas. Puck is dropping, Blasky wins it back to Bolger as that one immediately gets intercepted. We have a two on two heading into the Chippewa zone. Lansuki tries to step up and make a hit on Hensley. The official's arm went up momentarily but went right back down as we're back in the Timberwolves zone. Sleeper with it now behind his own net. He makes a move right around Blasky. 
Slowly carrying out of his own. He tries to connect on a pass there with McCarthy, but unable to. Laporte trying to hold the red line, but it goes all the way back into his own zone there where Sleeper has to make another play as that one gets intercepted by Bolger, but immediately tipped right back by the Timberwolves. And Suki with it now. He makes a stretch pass to Moore. Moore tries to get it up to Blasky, but hits a skate and goes wide of him and gets sent all the way back down to the Chippewa zone. And Suki with it now. He rims it up the glass, and that one to go up and out of play for a stoppage here with 2.53 remaining here in the first period. Chips still lead 3-1. to one. Shots now 15 to four in favor of CMU. So Northwood scored on the first goal or the first shot of the game for themselves, but Colin Smith has stood strong basically the rest of the way, stopping those next three shots he's faced. This face off will be Simon Selly and Owen. Puck is dropped and the Chippewas win it here. Simon Selly gets it up to Jeanette. Jeanette with it, connects with Porzanik at center ice. Porzanik will carry it in all alone. Jeanette kind of coming in late. Back up to the point, Brendan Martin. He rips a shot from the top of the circle. Sticked away there by Reed. Jeanette's able to pick up the rebound. He'll force it back deep, but picked up there by a Timberwolf, and he'll connect out there with Stutzman. It's a two on three heading into the Chippewa zone. Brendan Martin's able to paw that one out of the air and get it over to his brother, Chris. Chris with it. He gets taken down with a big hook there. And I believe that's Hensley, and it is. He'll be heading for the box here for two minutes of these last two minutes and 22 seconds of the first period. I mean, does a hooking really get any easier than that if you're an official. I mean, it basically put his stick right on in between both of his arms and took him down from behind. I mean, it's really the easiest call you're going to see in a hockey game almost <laughs> any any day. Chippewas so far tonight are one for two on the power play. They're going to try to make that two for three here as they put their top line out. Taraski taking that face off for the Chippewas and they win it. St. Andre with it back out to the point. He actually exits the zone. And the Chippewas now have to get out to touch up to get onside. 2.12 remaining here in the first period of play. Brendan Martin enters the zone quickly. He's looking for a passing lane. Drops it, tries to drive it back to St. Andre, but it makes its way back to Sutherland out at the point. Sutherland tries to cross ice pass taken by Stutzman. And now we have a, a rush here with Owen. He beats Brendan Martin, gets the backhand shot off. Gloved away there by Colin Smith. Tarasi's able to pick up the rebound. He tries to move it out of the zone, getting pressured there by Stutzman, but connects on the cross-ice pass to Sutherland. Sutherland with it now. He enters the zone. He gets it knocked away there by Bundnick, and Bundnick will send it all the way down. But it, has a weird, it hit a weird piece of the glass and actually stays in the zone. St. Andre with it now at the top of the circle. He'll rip a shot, hits the shin guards of Bundnick. Martin with it now. He tries to pass it deep. Sutherland with it now behind the net. He'll get it over to Roski. Crossy knocked off the puck by Naraki. Back over to Lansuki, back to Taraski. St. Andre's talking a lot in front of the net. I mean, yeah, and he just picked just, up a penalty for it. I, it's just so dumb because he should have had a tripping call beforehand. I, I just don't know what's going through St. Andre's head today. It's yeah. his third penalty. What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, it's his third penalty in one period, and he's still yelling. As a Northwood bench wants him. He's lucky he didn't get, get abuse of the official in all honesty. He's just gotta, he's just gotta stop talking. Yeah, but he, it, he's still jawing at the Northwood bench too. But here's the thing, why, why are neither of the coaches for CMU going over there and telling him to, hey, shut up, quit talking. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm sure they've been doing it all year, but someone has gotta get over there to talk to him yeah, and calm I, him down. I mean, three penalties, 18 minutes into this game? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I couldn't tell you. But it'll be four on four hockey here for 51 seconds. Finally, O'Leary. Okay, O'Leary did go talk to him now, so that's good. Yeah. Because he's got he's to <laughs> calm down a little bit because, I mean, it's just it's a little ridiculous, and it's putting the Chippewas in a, a, you know, a couple situations where they've had to kill off a few penalties already. Yeah, and after now being on four on four, the Chippewas are now one for three on the power play as that one will get credited as a killed off penalty for the Timberwolves. So we have four on four hockey here for the next 33 seconds. Sleeper with it, he connects with the LaRue on the far side. LaRue enters the zone with a one on two, he'll rip a shot, kind of an awkward glove save there by Colin Smith, but it gets the job done and he'll hang on to it for a face off of 48.3 remaining here. Four on four hockey for another 27 seconds and then actually as long as no goals are scored the rest of the way here, the Chippewas will start off the second period on a penalty kill. 
as St. Andre will have to serve about another minute 10 left. And I don't want to say too much yet, but we talked about it when CMU hosted Hope College. Their forward base or got four minor penalties. We were talking if it was an ACHA rule or not, if you picked up that fifth one, if it was ejection, as Gabe Smith takes a big hit check there and goes down. Naraki with it, he connects with, almost connects with Stutzman, excuse me, goes off his skates and taken away by Simon Selly. Simon Selly enters the zone, tries to backhand pass to Porzonic, drives it back to Simon Selly. Simon Selly with it in the corner, he'll drive it back out to the point. Gabe Smith with it now, and he'll go down and just send it back deep. Timberwolves now to a five on four man advantage for the rest of this period. 12 seconds remaining. Sleeper with it now trying to give his team one more opportunity to score this period as he enters the zone. He'll rip a shot, blocked away there by Hayes. And it goes up and out of play with a half second left to go. And the Timberwolves will have a 48 second power play to start the second period. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna be able to get a shot off here with .5 by the time, unless the center just rips one. But even <laughs> at that point, I don't know if it can actually get to the goal in that time. So the end of the first, it's gonna be 3-1 Chippewas. Good face off there by Lansuki as well, just to kind of go down and block a potential shot. But the buzzer does sound, so we're 20 minutes into this one, Nick, and it's 3-1 Chippewas. I think it was a good period for the Chippewas, but definitely things to clean up, and especially it comes in the penalty box where St. Andre's already got three penalties. Yeah, I mean, so far the Chippewas have, they have, they have eight minutes of penalties so far. Six of them are, are for St. Andre. But, I mean, overall, I mean, they did well with shots this period. They did well on controlling Northwood from actually getting to, the, to their goal crease. And, you know, they racked up three goals in the process, two coming from Taraski, one coming from St. Andre, um, one of them being a power play goal, which was that third one. I mean, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. Taraski's out here to play, definitely. He's had a few scoring chances trying to go for that hat trick in this one. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing so far, and I'm excited to see what the second period has to bring. All right, sounds good, Nick. We'll be back in about 15 minutes or so with the start of the second period. 20 minutes in, 40 minutes to go. It's Chippewas 3, Timberwolves 1. Welcome back, everyone, here to the Mount Pleasant Ice Arena as we are 20 minutes into game two of this weekend series between the Central Michigan Chippewas and the Northwood University Timberwolves. And after 20 minutes of play, it's the Chippewas three, Timberwolves one. However, the Timberwolves do enter the second period with a 48 second power play left over from that first period. So they'll look to capitalize on that, Nick. Yeah, definitely. I mean, St. Andre is in the box for the Chippewas and we already touched on it before we went to break. You know, he's already on his third penalty of the game, six penalty minutes, you know, total. And there is an ACHA rule that we have verified that if you do get five minor penalties in a game, you are ejected and out for the next game. So, I mean, he's really got to watch himself because he's, he's too good of a forward to really be playing like this. I mean, it's crazy to say this, but if he picks up that fourth one, Nick, I think you got to sit him the rest of the game. 100%, 100%. I mean, he, he needs to be here next week when we play Michigan, but the puck has dropped. The Chippewas are getting pressure forced against them. Laporte with it now. 26 seconds to go in the St. Andre penalty kill. Owen with it in the corner. He gets it back behind the net to Hensley. Hensley moves it around. He goes back out to the point to Sleeper. Sleeper shoots through traffic, hits the post, nearly goes off Smith and in. And Hayes there tries to clear it, but Sleeper jumped up to knock it down. They got one last clear there, and that'll do it for the penalty kill for the Chippewas as they now are back to even strength. Taraski's able to hold his own. He connects with Sutherland in the slot area. He makes a move. Shot, oh, big pad save, save there loose. by Reed. And he'll cover it up. Just 57 seconds into this one, Dalton Sutherland had a prime scoring chance there. He As, knows it too. Oh yeah, he made a move and just had to lift it two inches higher maybe, and that would have been a goal for him as he has picked up an assist already tonight. And I mean, he probably had 75% of that net open, I would say. Oh, 100%. He, just, he literally needed to get it two inches higher to get it over the pad of Reed, and he couldn't do it. Now the Timberwolves have a rush right off that face off as Dundor dumps it deep. He'll pick it up there behind the net as he gets hit there by Chris Martin. Chris Martin chips it back out to the point. Shot there, saved by Smith. Almost had a second opportunity there was Dundor, but unable to do it. Another save there by Smith off the shot by LaRue. Loose out front, spits out to the side, and Sutherland will pick it up there. He'll chip it over St. Andre with it now. He connects there with Taraski. Taraski connects with Sutherland. Sutherland carries it in. 
He, he tries to get a pass over to Chris Martin, but it's intercepted there. And now we have the rush the other way. It's Naraki going down there with LaRue. Naraki launches a shot. Big stick save there by Colin Smith. LaRue picks up the rebound, tries to pass out front, intercepted by Chris Martin, and he'll chip it up to St. Andre. St. Andre now chasing into the corner. He'll pick it up. He's looking for a passing lane out front, but he gets poked away there by Dundor. McCarthy battling forth there with St. Andre. St. Andre gets taken down. Back to Budnick. Bunnick has that zone goal line. He tries to clear it out, and he does. And this one will go all the way down for an icing. Lots of unnecessary icings for the Timberwolves today. Skate away, St. Andre. Skate yep. away. <laughs> Skate away. There you go. See, Northwood knows it. Oh, so they know. They're going to be getting under his skin the rest of the night, trying to get him to do something after a play or just something during the play that's obvious to pick up another penalty because they know he'll probably get benched if he picks up one more. A little over two minutes in this one. Northwood already has four shots this period as well. Only two less than they had all of that first period. Back to the point to Bolger. Bolger tries to connect with Lansuki, but it hits him in the skates awkwardly and goes back all the way to the Chippewa zone. Lansuki with it now, connects with Bolger on the cross-ice pass. Bolger heading up through the neutral zone now. He enters the zone. He's got Jeanette with him. He tries to pass out front, but good defense there by Stutzman to be in Jeanette's way to not be able to catch that pass. Sleeper with it now. He passes it back to his own net where Budnick is. He goes around his own net where it's pressured by Bolger. Intercept there. Back out front is Jeanette. Big kick save there by Reed to keep his team only down by two goals. Jeanette tried to make a play there, but his stick got slapped out of his hands. He has to go retrieve it as the Timberwolves clear it out, and Lansuki picks it up at his own blue line. Bolger with it now. He'll drop it for Porzondek. Porzondek with it now. We have a delayed penalty coming up to the Timberwolves. Simon Selly still with it. He'll move it up. Colin Smith will make his way to the benches. That one almost went in off a tip by Jeanette. He tries to force it back out front. We'll finally get the stoppage of play. And that'll probably just be an interference penalty as Lansuki got taken down about 100 feet behind the play. It was actually Bolger, I thought, wasn't it? Or was it Lansuki? Lansuki's that side of the ice, and it happened over there, so I'm going to assume it was Lansuki, but it very well could have been Bolger. No, Bolger's got his helmet off. I think it was Bolger because he looked around immediately, and it looks like it's just a two-minute minor. It was a really late hit, though, and I think Ryan Morse is arguing that it was a high hit as well as they are having a meeting at center ice are the officials. Yeah, and that'll be Jared LaRue. He went to the box. They're actually going to get him for a rough. So it's 16.43 to go here in the second period of play. The Chippewas will be heading to another power play here. Face off will be to the right of Reed. And we're still talking about this penalty. Ryan Moore still trying to get an explanation there on why that wasn't more of a penalty as it was behind the play and was a little bit high. Now the Northwood bench is getting an explanation about it. And it looks like play's about to now get underway as all the officials are now getting into position. Puck is dropped, Sutherland battling for it with Stutzman. Chippewa's come out with it. Taraski almost had a good scoring chance there, but batted away by Laporte. Brennan Martin in a foot race with Hensley, and Martin will win it there and wrap it around his own net to St. Andre. St. Andre with it now, moving quickly. He kind of gets roughed off the puck a little bit, but picks it up on the near side. He just passes it back over to Martin. Martin connects with Taraski. Almost hits St. Andre, drops it for him, actually. St. Andre makes a little bit of a move to keep the possession as he then correct, connects with Taraski. Now we have a breakaway coming the other way. It's Hensley. He's coming in. He makes a move. Awkward yet. Good save there by Colin Smith to give it, keep this two-goal lead here. Big save there while on the power play. But I mean, great shorthanded chance by the Northwood Timberwolves. Hensley's got 71 points. Great play by Smith to stop him. As Sutherland comes in, he tries to stuff one short side, saved by Reed. He picks up his own rebound, brings it back out to the point. Brennan Martin drops it for Taraski. Taraski with it now. He makes a move around Sleeper. Tries to go out front with a saucer pass. Can't connect with Martin, though, and now want to get sent back deep. Sutherland with it now. 55 seconds left in this Chippewa power play. Taraski behind that. Tries to go out front to Lansuki, but batted away by Laporte. Taraski behind his own net. He tries to, to go with a bank shot off the goaltender through the crease, but it was unable to go in. Sutherland back with it. Now he gets it out to St. Andre. 40 seconds left in the power play. Shot through traffic. Saved there by, saved there by Marshall. Picked up there. Score! To Dalton Sutherland assist as well. Jacob Lansuki nets one for the Chippewas. 
I believe that's Lansuki's. Yeah, that's only his third goal of the season as the Chippewas now take a 4-1 to one lead with 15-16. And like I said right after, give the assist to Dalton Sutherland. Now one away career-wise from 300 points for the Chippewas. It'll be a remarkable milestone when he reaches it. Yeah, we talked the intermission. Sutherland needs to kind of not think about that so it doesn't throw his game off a little bit. Just play his game and it'll eventually come along. Dundor rips a shot. Colin Smith hangs on to that one for a whistle. 15.08 remaining here. Back to even strength hockey after that power play goal. Give a lot of credit to Colin Smith this period. He's made some big saves already, especially, I mean, Hensley, I mentioned it. He's got 71 points. He had a breakaway. No pressure on him. I mean, Smith didn't make it look pretty by any means, but he got the save, and he's, and he's keeping him in. Jeanette with it now. He moves up through the neutral zone, almost connects with Simon Selly there. Simon Selly takes a hit from Dundor. Simon Selly tried to hold the line but was unable to, and it gets hit in by Hayes. Porzonic with it. It's taken there by LaRue. Dundor with it now. They're moving out. They have a three on two rust, but Chippewa's trying to retreat. Long range shot hits Smith in the chest. Big rebound there, but taken away by Hayes. Porzonic with it as he connects with Jeanette. Jim moves around, he runs a shot, saved there by the Timberwolves goaltender. And back to the corner. Simon Selly's battling for it with LaRue. Hayes rips a shot, misses wide. Jeanette with it now, he carries it around the point. Tries to get it deep, but picked up by McCarthy and almost had a scoring chance there for Dundor as he was gonna go in on a one-on-one, -on -one, but Gabe Smith will clear it in on net, make Reed stop that one. Sleeper with it now, battling for it is with Simon Selly. As that one spits out to the side, Jeanette will meet Sleeper as he takes a big hit there. Chris Martin's able to hold the line. He tries to rip a long range shot, but it's tipped away by a Northwood defenseman. I don't know how Simon Selly hasn't gone to the box yet. <laughs> Chris Martin with it now, he's got it at the point. He'll rip a long range shot through traffic. Awkward save there by Reba, he'll cover it up for a whistle. 13-39 remaining here in the second period of play. Chippewa's up four to one. And finally, Simon Selly got the call. I mean, he was tracking number 13 there, Brendan McCarthy, for a long time. He even gave him a couple cross checks. Couldn't believe he didn't get a call, you know, get called earlier on. But finally, a call comes in, so the Chippewas will head to the box. And that's actually Simon Selly's second penalty of the game. Yeah, the Chippewas have to a total of 10 minutes worth of penalties. And they're all from two different guys. Face off to the left of Smith, 13.39 to go in the second period. Chippewas on a disadvantage here on the penalty kill. Fazio wins that one for the Chippewas. Brennan Martin with it now, he'll rim it up the glass. Great clear there by the Chippewas as Agnello will force pressure on Sleeper. Sleeper picks it up behind his own net. Agnello still forcing that pressure as the other three Chippewas stay back. Sleeper makes the slow pass around to Dundor. Dundor again pressured there by Agnello as now Fazio will come in to pressure Sleeper in front of his own net. Sleeper makes his way through Agnello and Fazio. Now we have a two-on-two -two heading into the Chippewa zone. Sleeper takes a shot, trying to go through the legs of Brennan Martin, but he manages to close him up and knock the shot down. So that's a surprising no-call on the high stick there as the Northwood defenseman batted one out of the air as the Chippewas tried to clear it out. They managed to get it all the way down the Timberwolf, Timberwolves zone, however, and Dundor is with it now at his own, blue line, at his own goal line. Excuse me. Intercepted there by Martin at the red line. He's coming in. It's a one-on-three. He rips a shot, glove saved there by Reed, and he'll hang on to it with 12.41 remaining here in the second period of play. I really love watching Fazio and Agnello on the penalty kill for the Chippewas. They just hustle so hard. They get to the puck, they dump it, they pressure the opposing team back behind their own net even, and they do a really good job. And I mean, 58 seconds in this penalty kill, the Chippewas have one shot. Northwood has zero on the power play, and they've actually had it in Northwood's zone longer than Northwood's had it in the Chippewa zone. Wadge lost that faceoff for the Chippewas. Stutzman with it now. He connects with Owen, but Hensley's in the way, and Wadge will end up chipping that one back towards the Timberwolves zone as Noah Thomas lays a hit on Owen. Stutzman with it on the near side. He'll just clear it in as he passed the red line, and Smith will pick it up behind his own net. Gabe Smith cleared it out, hopped over the stick of Sleeper, and that one will go all the way back into the Timberwolves zone as Noah Thomas is forcing pressure on Sleeper. 30 seconds remaining here in this Chippewa penalty kill. Naraki with it, he's carrying up through the zone. He connects with Owen at the blue line. Owen the zone looking for that awkward shot angle, saved there by Smith. Back to Owen behind the net. 
He connects there with Stutzman. Stutzman with it, deep in the Chippewa zone. He tries to rip a shot, knocked away there by Smith. Smith picks it up now. He's going to try to carry it around his own net through Stutzman. He gets the job done, tries a backhand clear, but, Nor but Naraki is able to hold the zone and send it back deep. Naraki with it now, back at the point. He tries a cross ice pass to Owen. Owen rips a shot, misses high. Chippewa is now back to full strength. Gage Smith tried to get one more clear out, and he did, trying to connect with Gahomas in the neutral zone, but unable to. And the Timberwolves send it on net, make Colin Smith make the glove save. Thomas with it now. He tries that long pass up to Noah Thomas, but it hits a Timberwolf at the red line, so it will not be an icing as Sleeper picks it up behind his own goal line. Hayes battling forward along the boards now as he re-enters his own. He'll just dump it deep. And Budnick with it now behind his own net, getting pressured by McComas. He tries to connect there with LaRue. LaRue now picks it up later on in the neutral zone, just dumps it deep, and Hayes will go back behind the net to retrieve it. McCarthy and LaRue kind of getting around Hayes there, but Hayes is able to work his way out of there and connect on a round the net pass with Martin as he almost goes down after losing an edge. Martin connects at center ice with Blasky. Blasky's trying to carry it in. He passes over to McComas. McComas moving and tries to pass out front back over to Moore, but unable to get the job done. Blasky with it behind the net now. He's just going to send it back deep where Moore was right behind him and actually poked it right back through to the point. Hayes with it, drops over to Blasky. Excuse me, that's Moore. Moore cross ice pass to Martin, back out to Hayes. Slap shot from the point, hit a leg out front and goes wide. Brendan Martin with it over to Blasky behind the goal line, back up to McComas. McComas back to Blasky. Blasky getting roughed up against the boards there by Budnick, and Budnick's just holding him there on the boards. LaRue comes in along with Moore to try to free this puck, and they finally get it out. And McCarthy's coming up now. He's got Laporte with him. He goes wide. He rips a shot. Saved there by Colin Smith. McComas rushing in now. Sleeper beats him to it, though, and makes a move around him. Sleeper tries to connect on a pass there with LaRue, but unable to get there, and St. Andre picks it up. St. Andre's getting his stick lifted, but regains possession there as he enters the zone. He rips a shot, saved there by Reed, and that one goes wide after. Taraski with it now in the corner. Taraski gets roughed up a little bit there by LaRue. He, kinda, he still comes out with the possession as he moves his way back out to the point. He tries to cross his pass to McComas, but McComas can't handle it, picked up there by Sleeper. Sleeper's been out there for almost two minutes now. So has McComas. Chris Martin with it at the point. He'll rip one on net. Knocked in front by Naraki. Taraski with a second opportunity there. He's knocked down. Is able to get there, and he scores! I believe it was McComas. McComas picks up the assist. I think it was St. Andre. Yeah, it was hard to tell. McComas kind of shot it towards the net, but St. Andre was right there. I couldn't tell if it went off a stick or not. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll give that goal to St. Andre with the assist from McComas. So the Chippewas take a demanding 5-1 lead here now, just over the halfway mark in this game. Taraski also picks up the secondary assist as well, so his third point of the game. And with 9.09 left here, they take that 5-1 lead. Chippewas are buzzing here. The Timberwolves come out with that face-off win, but St. Andre forces it back deep. Sullen unable to hold the line, now Sleeper kind of has a rush there. He's got Carter with him. He makes a great move around Lansuki. They rip a shot. Big save there by Colin Smith, and they score on the rebound. Yeah, I mean, if you're Smith, you kind of did your job there. You made the first initial save on a two-on-one. It was a big rebound, but there was no Chippewas back to clear the puck out of the zone. I mean, it's they got to get back in their zone. I mean, you know, it's you know, you're up five-one now, five-two, but in a close game, that's just a, you, you got to hustle to get to that puck and knock it out of there. Yeah, and that goal will go to number 16, Justin Carter. That'll be his second goal of the season in 17 games played. So now we, the score is now 5-2 with 8.53 remaining in this second period of play. Sleeper now entering the zone. He's going back. He tries to wrap around. Stop there by Smith. Sullen now picks it up. He's got some guys with him. Taraski now with it. So he gets slashed up by Sleeper and knocks the puck off. LaRue with it now. He's moving in with Roaring. We have a two-on-two. -two. Long range shot there. Gloved out of the air by Colin Smith, and he'll hang on to that one for a whistle. Yeah, Chippewa's kind of sitting back a little here the last, at, really after they scored that last goal by St. Andre, only 45 seconds ago, but they've sat back. Northwood was able to net one, and then they've come close on a couple other opportunities as well. 
Face off be coming up to the left of Colin Smith. Simon Selly almost won that one for the Chippewas, but immediately taken there by the Timberwolves, but then snatched right back by Simon Selly. Simon Selly heading into the zone. He tr looking for a pass out front. He tries to get that to Porzondek. Shot there by Jeanette, and he scores! Jackson Jeanette nets one for the Chippewas. Off the assist from Simon Selly, and the Chippewas get this lead back up to four, six to two here with 8.13 remaining in the second period. As soon as I called out the Chippewas for sitting back a little for 45 seconds, they come back and answer one of their own, give Jackson Jeanette his seventh goal of the season, and Simon Selly his eighth assist as well. Timberwolves with it now, battling for it along the near side boards as the official gets in the way a little bit. Stutzman comes out with it. Hensley with it, he rips a long range shot, gloved out of the air by Smith, and he'll hang on to that one. Shots now 13 to 10 in this period in favor of Northwood. So Northwood's got the shots. I mean, they had four in the first two minutes. That's where a majority of their shots come from. Chippewas have since weathered the storm and really outplayed Northwood the rest of the way. Bolger with it, trying to connect there with Jeanette, but taken by Stutzman. Stutzman, weak backhand, but it kind of made a weird bounce there, and Hensley wasn't able to handle it in the slot area. Hensley with it back behind that. He tries that pass out front, but Bundnick has to hold the line. He rips a shot through traffic, misses wide. Hensley picks it up, tries to pass out front, but it hits the skates of Hayes and goes right to Porzondek. Porzondek connects with Gabe Smith. Smith carrying it up. Now he tries to saucer pass over to Jeanette, but it didn't get down in time, and it goes deep. Jeanette picks it up behind the net. He loses an edge and goes down. Butnick with it now. He makes a move around Fazio, and now we have a three-on-two heading into the Chippewa zone as he connects with Stutzman. Stutzman carries it in. Slap shot there by Hensley on the one-timer. Misses wide. Sleeper picks up the bounce off the backboard, sends it back deep, but picked up there by Chris Martin. Martin with it now. He tries to connect with Porzonic, but he passes it into traffic, and Porzonic managed to pull it off and gets it deep in the, in the Timberwolves zone as Porzonic almost held on to the Timberwolves defenseman. Back out front now with the Chippewas. Ignello almost had a chance there, but lost it in his feet, and he'll lose an edge in the corner with Budnick. Fazio then picks it up. He tries to carry it out front. Shot there by Chris Martin. Easily blockered away there by Reed. Sleeper with it now in the corner. He tries to get it up to Owen, but can't. Fazio still battling forward in there with Ignello and Sleeper. Sleeper comes out with it. He takes it around his own net. Tries to make Porzonic miss, but can't, as Porzonic gets pinched along the boards there. And Agnello can't handle the pass, and he'll go off for a change as it heads back into the Chippewa zone. Porzondek got frustrated there in the corner and then just shoved down, I believe, number five, Owen. So he'll pick up a penalty now of his own. A lot of these penalties for the Chippewas has just been after the play, as it will be called a rough. Yeah, we've talked a lot so far this second semester on how if the Chippewas are going to get penalties, they need to be hockey-related penalties. I mean, you know, trips, slashes, hooks, those kind of things happen. But when it's after the whistle and you're just not thinking and you shove a guy down, slash and punch and whatever, I mean, you're only hurting your team and thinking about yourself in that situation. Well, and the strange thing, too, is they've cleaned it up the last two or three weekends. They really haven't taken these penalties, and then this weekend they've just added up. Chippewas won that face off and immediately cleared it down, wasting 10 seconds off their penalty kill as Agnello once again forcing great pressure here on the penalty kill while the other three Chippewas stay back. Fazio trying to step up there, but they worked their way around him. And McCarthy and Stutzman coming in on two on two. McCarthy makes his way around Bolger and a big save there by Colin Smith, and he'll hang on to it. It basically resulted in a breakaway there as Stutzman tried to make a move on Smith, but Smith didn't fall for it and made the save. 6.02 remaining here in the second period of play. Minute 35 left on the Chippewa penalty kill. I mean, Smith's seen 20 shots in this one. He saved 18 of them, so a pretty solid performance for not having played in a game in a long time. Hensley with it in the corner now. Back around the net. Now McCarthy with it. Bolger takes a spill. Lansuki trying to, still a huge battle for it. They try a wrap around, but that one goes wide. Back out to the point now, Sleeper with it. He chips into Stutzman. Stutzman rips a shot glove there by Colin Smith, and he'll hang on to it once again as he's trying to kill this penalty off. Yeah, Northwood so far on the night, one for four on the power play. So that's not actually too bad for themselves as they're at that 9.3% power play. So, so far, I think I've been pretty impressed with their power play. They've moved the puck a lot better than they did yesterday overall as well on the power play. Dundor with a shot. That one gets tipped out front and goes high and wide. Hensley with it now. He's sitting at the top of the circle. He'll wind up a slap shot. That one hit the post short side and blasts all the way out to the opposite point where Dundor is able to hold his own. 
He gets it over to Sleeper now, getting pressured by Thomas. Back to Hensley. He rips a shot. That one gets tipped around in, in the slot area, and the Chippewas are able to get it and clear it out. 45 seconds remaining on their penalty kill. 5-10 to go in the second period. Chip's still up 6-2 in this one. Sleeper with it now, walking past Noah Thomas, but he'll just drop it back to Dundor. Dundor moving in quickly. It's a one-on-three heading into the Chippewa goaltender. Dundor takes it all the way around the net to the opposite side boards where he gets stuffed there by Hayes, and Hayes will just kind of pin it to the boards, trying to kill off this final part of the penalty kill as Gabe Smith comes in and lays a body there on Stutzman. Puck spits out, Owen with it now. Back up to the point where Sleeper is. Tries to get the cross ice pass over to Dundor, but he has to catch it off the bounce off the boards. Ripped a shot there. That hit a body in front, almost redirected. Chippewas get a final clear out, and that'll do it for the Chippewa penalty kill as they are now four for five on the night when it comes to the penalty kill. LaRue with it now, moving in quickly. He rips a shot. That one misses high just over the crossbar. Back to the other side now. Moore makes a nice move around Sleeper, but can't handle it on his own stick. Yet again, got it taken away from him. And the Timberwolves will now go off sides. Good break there for the Chippewas as Moore just couldn't manage to get the puck on his stick. 4-10 left here in the second period. 6-2 Chippewas. Basically, we've just doubled our scores from period one so far, 16 minutes into this period. Chippewas win the faceoff. Brennan Martin with it. He's going to take it in, just dump it in once he crosses the red line. He kind of takes a late hit there from LaRue. He wanted a penalty called there, but that one, that shot goes wide by Martin. McComas with it now. He tries a little pass out front, but no one's there to get it. McCarthy picks it up for the Timberwolves. McCarthy battling along with Chris Martin there as Chris Martin lays the body on him, and McCarthy will pick it up behind the net. Moore comes in. Chippewas have three men below their goal lines. They have to now get back in position in their defensive zone as that shot goes wide by Naraki as Budnick's able to hold the zone in the opposite point. Moore with it now in the corner. He'll get it back behind the net to Martin. Martin will move it out to Blasky. Blasky tried to tip it back out to the middle for a breakout pass, but it got tied up in his skates. And LaRue back with it now at the top of the circle. He tries to connect in the slot area. Moore can't handle it. That one goes in almost on net there as Colin Smith just pokes it a little bit more into his corner. Big battle for it along the near side boards as it gets spit out on net. Colin Smith will just put the, the paddle down to stop that one and cover it up. 3.04 remaining here in the second period, chips up 6-2. to two. Yeah, it's a little bit of a sloppy play there in the Chippewa zone. I noticed at one point there was four Chippewas in one corner, and then the other winger, I believe was Blasky, was pretty far down low on the other side. I mean, you're, it's going to be hard to clear pucks out of your own zone at that point with nobody pressuring the defenseman of the opposing team. Owen took that face off against Sutherland, but Sutherland came out with it, and he gets back to Lansuki. And Suki with it now, looking for a passing lane. Tries to connect with Sutherland on the far side boards, but it goes all the way down into the Timberwolves zone. Too short for an icing as Sleeper has to pick it up at the faceoff dot. He worked his way around the net. Stolen there by Sutherland. Sutherland will just chip it back deep. Where St. Andre tries to force some pressure. Timberwolves exit the zone now. We have a three on one heading into the Chippewa zone. Bolger, the lone defenseman. They rip a shot. Big windmill glove save there by Colin Smith to keep this four goal lead for the Chippewas. 2.36 to go in the second period of play. Once again, Smith stepping up pretty big here today for the Chippewas. He's played really well. I mean, it's only his third time all year seeing action. He's 2-0 and on the season, and he's kind of showing why. He's flashed a few big saves. He's made a, just a big few saves overall as well, and he's done a nice job in that. Yeah, we have a penalty coming up here, I believe, to the Chippewas. Did not see what it was for. They're going to get, I believe, Lansuki for a cross check. So the Chippewas once again will be heading to the penalty kill here. with 2.29 remaining here in the second period of play. He looks a little confused on the call. I didn't see it myself. He's It happened out in front of the net while the puck was in the corner, so our attention was to the puck, and he must have just gotten him one too many times out there in the slot area. And For two minutes of the next 2.29 left in this second period of play, the chips will be shorthanded. It'll be Sullen and Stutzman taking this face off. Sullen wins it for the Chippewas. Gabe Smith picks it up, tries to rim one off the glass, but it goes off St. Andre. And Sullen and St. Andre try to turn this into something as they hit it on a two-on-two. -two. Sutherland with it now. He'll work his way around behind the net. He's getting held majorly there by Stutzman. No call, though. He got held for three or four seconds there behind the net. 
Sleeper with it now. He carries it out of his zone through the neutral zone. Connects with Stutzman on the, on the near side. Stutzman whiffs on a shot there and has to regroup. Gets it back up to the point with Sleeper. But Sutherland's charging in. Reed comes out to play the puck. Sutherland actually beat him to it. He's And just couldn't handle it behind the net to try to stuff it in. That wide open goal there. He's looking for that 300th. Almost had it there. Picked up here by Hensley, he's moving in. He makes the move, tries the wraparound, cuts back, tries to pass out front. Not really sure where it is right now as it gets spit out into the corner where McCarthy picks it up. Back out to Dundor at the point, connects with Sleeper. Sleeper with it at the hash, back out front for McCarthy. Missed there on the shot. That one to get picked up by the Chippewas, pawed down at the blue line by Dundor. Great play by him to hold the line. Hensley with it now, tries to pass out front. Intercepted by Hayes, he connects with Sutherland. Sutherland a loop, back around into his own zone before trying to clear it out. Held at the red line again by Dundor. 42 seconds remaining here in the Chippewa penalty kill. Once again held at the red line by Dundor. Chippewas cannot get an icing past him. LaRue with it now, he makes a good spin move around Gabe Smith to keep possession. He comes in, odd angle shot there, saved by Smith. Almost tried the wraparound back out front. No one was there to catch it. Naraki holds the zone. St. Andre will pick it up and barely be able to get it out as Budnick has to drop all the way back to his own blue line. 17 seconds to go in this Chippewa penalty kill as he tries to connect with LaRue, and that one will go down for an icing. 41 and a half seconds left in this second period. 12 seconds left on the CMU penalty kill. Yeah, I mean, once again, a really good penalty kill for the Chippewas, almost creating more chances on the other end than Northwood, is in, than Northwood is in the Chippewa zone. You're really no complaints today from the penalty kill. Simon Selly with it now. He'll take that face off against LaRue. Gets tied up in LaRue's feet and the Timberwolves actually come out with it but immediately taken away there by Simon Selly. Porzonic with it, he'll pass out front. Shot there by Chris Martin. Blocked there by Reed. Second attempt by Chris Martin goes high and Stutzman will pick it up in the corner, get it over to Bunnick behind the net. Back to full strength as well. Simon Selly with it now, he loops in. He tries to pass over to Lansuki, Lansuki shoots and he scores! That'll be Lansuki's second goal of the night for the Chippewas. Give the assist to Joey Simon Selly, his second of the night, and back to back assist for number 91 there, Joey Simon Selly. Yeah, you mentioned Lansuki's second of the night, and coming into this one, he only had two. So he's doubled his goal total, and that was basically as soon as he came out of the box, about 20 minutes after that penalty expired against Lansuki. So the Chippewas now have a demanding five goal lead and should still have it heading into this final period of play. Laporte has it, he loses an edge behind his own net. Seven seconds left here in the period, gets it up to LaRue. They try to break it out, but they're not gonna have enough time to get a quality scoring chance, but they'll rip one more shot. Colin Smith makes the easy stick save there in the second period will end with a score of Chippewas at seven, Northwood at two. Shot totals that period were 14 for the Central Michigan Chippewas, getting them 30 on the night now. And then on the other side, it was 19 actually for Northwood. So they put up a pretty solid period shot wise. They now have 25 on the night. So they're kind of closing in on the Chippewas in that category, but they're not closing in on them on the scoreboard. Yeah, definitely, and I mean, Colin Smith's played a very, very good game so far. He, you know, they, the Northwood with about three minutes left in that period, went into the Chippewa zone on a three-on-one. He managed to flash a leather, snag a hard shot out of the air. But I believe it was McCarthy coming in there hot with two of his forwards still with him. But, you know, great save by Colin Smith, but I want to give some credit to Bolger there. He was the lone defenseman back there. He was perfectly positioned to take away both passing lanes there, and especially if he laid out, there would have been – absolutely 0% chance of a good pass getting past him. So, I mean, he forced that shooter, that first guy to take the shot. Smith saw it all the way. He got a good glove save to keep his team, keep, give his team this massive lead. Yeah, and he's got a 920 save percentage, so he's done really well for seeing the limited action he has all year. Well, we're 40 minutes into play here. Chippewas lead 7-2 to two over the Northwood Timberwolves. We'll be back for the final 20 minutes of play here in about 14 minutes or so. Thank you for listening. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back everyone here to the Mount Pleasant Ice Arena. As you can hear the buzzer going on in the background as both teams have taken the ice here for the 
Start of the third period, it's Central Michigan seven, Northwood two, heading into this final 20 minutes of play as the Chippewas are looking for that weekend sweep to improve their record to 15, nine and one on the season if they can finish it off here in the last 20, Nick. Yeah, they've been playing great hockey here tonight. I, I can tell Taraski is still hungry for that possible hat trick that he's going for. He scored the first two goals of the night, both of them within the first 10 minutes of play for the Chippewas. So, I mean, he's looking for more. He's picked up an assist as well. He's had a great three-point night so far, as well as, I mean, our third string goalie, Colin Smith, has been playing phenomenal tonight so far. As the puck has dropped here, we're 10 seconds in. It's the Chippewas cleared out to the neutral zone, set right back in by Naraki. Stopped behind the net there by Colin Smith. Hayes bounces off the boards, connects there with Sutherland. Sutherland's heading into the offensive zone, drops it for Taraski. Taraski with it. He has an odd angle shot there. It hit the post. Not sure where it went after that. I believe it must have gone out of play really, really quickly. Because oh. I. He's calling Fazio for being in the crease. Oh, okay. I didn't think he was that close, but. So it will be coming out of the Northwood zone with a faceoff right next to their bench. It'll be Sutherland taking this faceoff for the Chippewas, going up against Jared LaRue of Northwood. One there by the Chippewas. Dave Smith with it now. He'll dump it in. Picked up behind the net by Budnick. He gets hit there by Taroski, but he's able to keep it. Smith back out at the point. He rips a shot, hits a leg out front, gets redirected a little bit, but hit away by the Timberwolves. Smith with it now at the point. He tries to get it deep to settle in, but the Timberwolves have a three-on-two rush coming the other way. McCarthy with it. He rips a shot, saved there by Colin Smith, and he'll hang on just 50 seconds into this one. Both teams will make a full line change almost a minute into this period, so... Both, I believe, the second lines from both teams coming out here. Actually, it'll be the number one line of Northwood out there with Hensley. Simon Selly wins it for the Chippewas, but taken over by the Timberwolves, then intercepted by Chris Martin. Central coming in with a two-on-two, three-on-two now heading in. Passes over Porzanek, but then hit away there by Owen. Stutzman with it now. He's got Hensley deep, connects with him. Brennan Martin forcing him to the outside, tries to make a move to the middle, tipped away there by Chris Martin, and out to the corner. Odd angle shot there by the Timberwolves, knocked away by Smith. Poor Zondick with it now, carrying it through the neutral zone. He tries to make a move around Sleever, gets held there a little bit, did a full 360, no call though. Stutzman has it along the boards. He tries to connect a pass out to the neutral zone, but kept in by Simon Selly. Stutzman finally gets it out of his zone and just sends it all the way down. This one will be going for an icing with 18.21 to go here, heading back to the Timberwolves zone. And Chippewa's kind of coming out into this third period like you'd expect, a little bit slower pace. You're up seven to two, don't want to allow any breaks for Northwood and really just kind of keep Northwood in check in this period. And that's really all you have to do if you're the Chippewas. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we did speak on it yesterday a little bit about how the ACHA ranking system works and how goal differential is one of the key aspects to your team improving in the rankings. Now, regardless of how much you beat a team by, the maximum amount of goal differential that can be put in is five in favor of your team. So, I mean, Chippewas have a five-goal lead right now, and they want to keep that. Timberwolves moving in quickly into the Chippewa zone. It goes behind the net, kind of goes back out front, but sent right back by Noah Thomas. Thomas tries to move it out, intercepted there by Hensley. He actually trips up Hensley there. No call, though. Thomas moving in with Fazio, two on three. That one gets sticked away by Reed, but bounces right back out front. And we have a stoppage of play here as the net's off. Fazio a little bit slow to get up behind the net, but he'll be all right as he talks with Naraki a little bit behind the net there. 17.44 to go in this final period of play. Chippewa is still up 7-2. Faceoff be coming up to the left of Reed. Puck is dropped, one there by the Chippewas. Back out to the point, Lansuki rips a shot, sticked away there by Reed. Carter chips it out, Lansuki just sends it right back in, the Chippewas have to touch up there. Naraski with it now behind the net, he tries a long pass, intercepted there by Lansuki, and Lansuki once again just sends it right back in. Intercepted in the slot area by Fazio, he rips a shot, shoulder save there by Reed. 
LaRue with it now, carries it all the way through the neutral zone where Lansuki makes him dump it in, and he's met behind the net by Bolger. Pass over to Lansuki. Lansuki tries to poke it up there, and he does. Agnello with it now, gets it over to Fazio. Fazio with it, moves it up to center ice, trying to connect with more there, but intercepted by Sleeper. Sleeper almost gets it to LaRue, but it just rolls off the toe of his stick. Lansuki now battling for it, kicks it out of his zone, and Sleeper once again picks it up in his own blue line. Long pass by Sleeper, picked off there by Lansuki, and Lansuki will carry it up through the neutral zone. Lansuki has two goals tonight as well as Taraski. Timberwolves with it now in their own zone. Long stress pass once again, not connected as this one will go all the way down. Icing was called off, and Smith will have to pick it up. Gabe Smith leaves it there for Hayes. Hayes connects with Watch. Watch gets it up to McComas. McComas moves through the neutral zone, takes a body there from Laporte, but regains possession, pass out front, shot there by Moore. Not sure if there was a save there as there was many bodies in front of the net, but puck didn't go in. Could have been a hooking call there on McComas. No call, though, as the Timberwolves trying to get something going in their offensive zone. Shot there by LaRue, hits the pads of Wadge. Shot there through traffic, goes wide. Weird bounce out front there. No one's there to pick it up. McComas lays a body there on McCarthy, and Wadge is able to get it out of the zone as he connects with a cross-ice pass to Moore. Moore will dump and change. Reed stops it behind his own net for Sleeper. Wadge pressuring Sleeper, makes him move it out of his, out from behind the net before he wanted to, but Sleeper will take this one coast to coast. Zero makes a great move around a defenseman, shot there, misses short side. McCarthy meets St. Andre on the other side as Budnick's barely able to hold the zone, and it looks like Northwood was off sides there, so we will have a stoppage play, 15.30 to go in this one. Chippewa's still up seven to two. More somebody looking for his first point of the season still for the Chippewas was just kind of frustrated he couldn't <laughs> bury that one right in front of the net. It was a great chance, probably his best chance all year to net a goal for the Chippewas, and he was just a little bit off there, and he was a little bit upset with himself. Sutherland wins the faceoff for the Chippewas. Weird bounce off the boards there for Brennan Martin, but he regains possession. Gets a puck over to St. Andre, connects with Taraski. Taraski pushes it deep. Timberwolves with it now. Stutzman passes it over to Owen. Owen with it now, he's got Hensley moving down. It's a two on two, tries to cross ice pass, but out of Hensley's reach, goes into the opposite corner. Picked up by Willis on the other side. Dump back deep to Owens, pass out front to Hensley. Hensley trying to get his stick on the puck, but can't. This Chippewa defense is just too strong as Brendan Martin tried to connect on a long range pass up to Sutherland. He's still looking for that 300 point this year as Sutherland beats out the ice and gets it to Taraski now. Taraski tries to get it out front, back to Sutherland, back on to St. Andre, St. Andre rips a shot. Hits Budnick right out front as St. Andre takes a spill and Hensley carries it out for Northwood. Hensley moves in, tries to make a move around Brennan Martin, but Martin stands his ground and passes it over to his brother Chris behind the net. Chris can't handle it, back over to Engstrom. Engstrom gets his taken by Taraski. Taraski moving slowly out of his zone, connects with Sutherland at center ice. Sutherland carried it into the zone, now trying to peel in towards the net, but it gets the puck bounced off of his stick as Reed is able to cover it. A little bit of an early whistle there as the puck was still loose as Reed did get his glove on it, but Sutherland was able to poke it free for just a moment before it was recovered by the goaltender. I thought we were gonna have a chance to see it there, <laughs> Nick, with the stretch pass up to Sutherland. He would have had a clear breakaway, just he couldn't knock it down on the uh, saucer pass from Brennan Martin. Oh, so close to a great opportunity <laughs> though to get that 300th career point. Timberwolves win that face off in their own zone. Laporte connects with the pass to Sleeper. Sleeper with it now, he'll carry it up through the neutral zone. Takes it really deep into the Central Michigan zone before he rips an odd angle shot. Easy save there by Smith oh. as he covers that puck up. And he'll hang on to that one for a face off. 14.02 to go in this final period of play. Yeah, and six minutes of play into this period, Nick, we only got three shots aside. As Lansuki kind of took a spill onto his own goaltender, Colin Smith, he's acting like he was shoved, you know, like down by a Northwood player. I believe he kind of just tripped over the back of the net and flew forward there, but. Puck is dropped and Timberwolves come out with this one. Battling for it behind the net was Bolger. He gets it over to Porzana because that one gets taken away by Engstrom. Jeanette steals it from him and now they're still battling for it as it's tied up in the feet of Engstrom and Bolger comes out with it. Nobody really knows where the puck is now as it's back in the corner there. Simon Selly comes out with it. He connects with Porzondek. Porzondek bumps up to Simon Selly. Simon Selly and Jeanette moving in on a two on three. As they stay on side, Simon Selly's forced to go wide and Laporte will pick it up there for the Timberwolves. 
Jeanette with it now, gets it back to Lansuki. Lansuki is able to pinch in and get it back deep as he's still pressuring and Jeanette has to take his place at the point. Held in at the blue line there by Bolger after the attempted clear by the Timberwolves as Lansuki will go off for a change. Poor Zondek with it now, deep in, deep in the Timberwolves zone, battling for it in the corner along with Jeanette. Timberwolves able to get the clear out. Awkward bouncing puck there as LaRue can't find it in the high slot area of the Chippewa zone. Picked back up by another Timberwolf. Shot on goal, sticked away by Smith. LaRue battling forward in the corner with Simon Selly, and Simon Selly trips over his own two feet and takes a spill. Naraki's able to hold the line. He'll take a shot through traffic, but Colin Smith saw it the whole way, and he'll hang on to it for yet another faceoff in his zone. 12.46 remaining in the final period of play. Chippewa is still hanging on to that five-goal, 7-2 lead. Yeah, good save there from Smith. I really don't know how he saw it the <laughs> whole way as he did. I mean, it was a really clean save with a good four to five bodies right in front of him. So good job by Colin Smith, and he just keeps making save after save. He's five for five in this third period. Chippewas win that face off. Agnello with it now. He connects on a pass with Noah Thomas while the Rocky tried to lay a huge hit on him. Thomas was able to avoid the hit but missed the puck, and Naraki picked it up for the Timberwolves. He connects with Budnick behind the net. Budnick moves it along the boards to McCarthy. McCarthy moves it up there to Dundor. Dundor just dumps it deep to Chase. Hayes beats him there behind his own net. Dundor forcing pressure now. Hayes chips it up to Agnello, but Agnello can't handle it and gets it over to Hayes now. Hayes battling for it, stolen there by McCarthy as Father Joe lays a body on him. Dundor, Agnello, or excuse me, Hayes, Agnello, and Fazio all battling for it in the corner with two Timberwolves, and the Chippewas come out with it. Agnello with it now. He connects with Smith. Gabe Smith with it now. He's got Thomas in the slot area. Tries the odd angle pass. Odd angle shot, excuse me, hits the post. It goes wide. Gabe Smith with it now in the corner. He's battling for it there with Dundor. Dundor tries to clear it out. Hits a weird pain in the glass and skips towards the center of the zone where Agnello picks it up and moves it back outside. Smith with it now behind the net. He moves around the Northwood goaltender, passes out to the point where Fazio is. He connects with Hayes on the other side. Hayes with it now. He'll just dump it deep smartly as Dundor had his shot pretty covered up. Noah Thomas with it now. He'll pass it back out to Hayes. Hayes back over to Thomas. Thomas gets it back over to Hayes quickly, and Hayes is barely able to hold the line as Dundor paws a shot out of the air. And now we have a rush coming the other way for the Timberwolves but it'll go out of reach of LaRue and all the way in on Colin Smith where he'll hang on to it for another faceoff. 11-12 remaining in this final period of play. Shots five to three now in favor of Northwood, but really if you're the Chippewas, you're, you're playing this period like you should be. You're up five goals, that's the max allowed really for the ranking system. There's no need really to run it up unless, or you know, even score again unless the opportunity is perfectly presents itself or Northwood scores another goal or two. Northwood with it now. They try an odd angle shot. Almost get it by short side on Smith, but Smith closes the door there with the blocker, and they score. From a pass out from the point, that was number nine, Hensley. He's their top player on this Northwood squad. Chippewas managed to limit him to just one assist yesterday, as I believe it was Laporte that picked up the assist there. Yeah, and Hensley's got a goal and an assist now, so give him 73 points on this season for Matt Hensley, so really a fantastic season for him. As that one happened at the 10.59 mark of this third period of play, Chippewa lead now cut down to four, so you might see the Chippewas getting a little more hungry because they really want that five goal goal differential here. Owen carries it in for the Timberwolves, great stick lift there by Keegan Moore retreating back to his own zone to make that defensive play. McComas connects with Blasky on the near side. He'll just try to get it deep, but Laporte kind of stands him up there at the blue line, but he managed to get the job done. Battling for it in the corner now. Back out to the neutral zone where Brennan Martin will hang on to it. He'll come all the way back to his own zone. Tries to stretch pass out to Moore. Barely stays on side there, and he'll just chip it deep, and Moore will go off for a change. Simply cleared out of the Timberwolves zone. Chris Martin will just flick it high and long right into the slot area of the Timberwolves as Justin McComas breaks his stick and actually, I believe he broke it on the net and that's kind of what sent the net off as we have another stoppage to play here. 10.06 to go in this one. Score now seven to three in favor of the Chippewas. Well, that'll be another $200 purchase for uh, <laughs> Justin McComas as that stake, uh, stick breaks. Yeah, I believe he was kind of trying to move around the net and the toe of his stick got caught underneath it. And with all of that speed he was moving with, 
you know, stick shattered and yank the net off with it as the Chippewas put their top line out now. Sutherland wins that one for the Chippewas. Gets to send Andre back in the slot area. Sutherland with a shot going high blocker side. Block it away there by Reed. Northwood with it now. They carry it into the zone. Bolger gets a body laid on him, but Sutherland's there to pick it up. Sullen's able to clear it all the way out as Taraski's chasing Laporte all the way back into his own zone, forcing that pressure. Carter with it now at his own blue line. He tries to stretch pass over to Gunsel. He'll just dump it deep. And Gunsel will go off for a change. Excuse me, that was Laporte going off for a change. Lansuki with it now behind his own net. He's battling for it with Roaring. Carter comes in there to help out, but Lansuki managed to get it out to Sutherland as Sutherland carries it out of the zone. He connects with Taraski. Taraski tries to backhand pass to Sutherland and manages to connect it as Sutherland avoids a hit but is forced to send it deep. Taraski battling forth there along the goal line, but the Timberwolves are able to get it out of the zone. They have a three on three coming in. Gunsel rips a shot, bounce off the backboards. A little awkward there as it was coming right back out towards the backside of Colin Smith, but he manages to get a glove on it and hold this one for another face off. Nine minutes to go in this final frame. 7-3 Chippewa lead. We've seen a couple of weird bounces off the backboards uh, where Colin Smith is in net right now. That's to the left of where we're standing. There was one, I believe, it was back in the first period that took a really awkward hop as well. So kind of interesting, a few odd bounces there back behind that net. As Gabe Smith is trying to connect on a pass with Porzondek, and it'll go all the way down. And the Chippewas will get called for icing here just nine seconds after that play started. So if this faceoff will come to the right of Colin Smith. 8.51 remaining here in this final frame. It'll be the Simon Selly line out right now. Simon Selly taking the face off, gets tied up in the feet of LaRue. They almost get a shot off, but it goes off the leg of Simon Selly. Battling for it now in the corner with Smith and it spits out to the other side. Porzanik picks it up, drops it back for Hayes. Hayes makes a move, dangerous pass in front of his own net, trying to get it to Simon Selly, but he's able to poke it over to Smith. Smith with it now, connects with Porzanik at the blue, at the red line, and Porzanik will just dump it in and rough off a hit there from Budnick. Jeanette battling forward in the corner. Gabe Smith pinching in. He's able to send it back deep. Jeanette battling for it. Porzana gets it back out in the slot area for Jeanette, but it's bumped away by two Timberwolves. Shot from the point. Big hit laid there on Gabe Smith. That was McCarthy laying that hit. Hayes with it now retreats all the way back to his own zone as he connects there with Simon Selly. Simon Selly carries it in. He's got Porzanik with him. He tries to drop it back for him, but he wasn't there. And now we have Budnick on a rush coming back. It's a three on two. He's got the LaRue brothers with him as he tries a shot or a pass out front. And it hits the stick of Chris Martin and goes up into the netting for a stoppage play. 7.46 to go here. Face off will be coming to the left of Chippewa goaltender Colin Smith here. Fazio won that one for the Chippewas as Agnello's coming out with it, but held the line there by the Northwood defenseman. Brennan Martin with it. He tries to stretch pass out to Agnello, but it takes a weird hop on the ice, and that one to go all the way down for another icing. Back to the Chippewa zone we go. Seven thirty-two left here in the third period. Chippewas lead this one seven to three, and really it's just been an all-around Chippewa dominant performance here this afternoon against Northwood. Chippewas win it in their own zone, battling for it now behind the net with Engstrom and Larue. Engstrom comes out with it, tries to pass out front, picked off there by Agnello, and he'll try to carry it out, and he does, but he'll send it all the way down once again. And that icing actually gets called off as it doesn't make it all the way to the goal line. Sleeper has to pick it up there for the Timberwolves. Intercepted there by Thomas. He comes in, rips a shot. Good blocker save there by Reed to keep this one a four-goal deficit for his team. I mean, really, that's only the Chippewas' fourth shot of this period, more than or just under 13 minutes into it. But you really can't argue with what they're doing this third period. They're just killing time, moving the puck around, making sure Northwood doesn't get a, too, too many great chances in the Chippewa zone. And really, you just... I, I mean, I'm pretty happy with their play this third period. 
LaRue with it now, moving up through the neutral zone. He's got a couple guys with him. He tries to force out through the net. He tries to pass out front, but it goes right across the crease and into the opposite corner. Noah Thomas with it now. He'll send it back behind his own net for Brennan Martin. Brennan Martin will take his time with it as he connects with Fazio. Fazio tries all the way across the ice to Noah Thomas, but Thomas wasn't moving quick enough and wasn't able to get it to him, but was able to clear it in. Martin forced Sleeper back into his own zone, but then backed off as it looks like he could be looking for a change soon. But Naraki connects with Stutzman. Lansuki stands up, Stutzman there. Oh, okay. And I believe it was just an offsides call, but there was a, kind of an awkward, it was kind of a hit that Lansuki laid there on Stutzman, where Lansuki lost his stick, and we at first thought it was gonna be a penalty on Lansuki, but it turned out to just be an off, a late offside call against the Timberwolves. So it'll be just outside the Chippewa zone. McComas took the face off, but it was won by Northwoods Owen. But the Chippewas immediately take it back over in their own zone. Lansuki now, cross ice pass over to Bolger. He can't handle it. Gets tied up in Moore's feet. Stolen there by Stutzman. He tries to wrap around. Save there by Smith. A second opportunity, another save. And he'll cover that one up with 6.10 to go here in the final period. Yeah, really good slide from Colin Smith there from left to right to shut down the wraparound opportunity. And he's just, once again, making good saves for the Chippewas. He's on... On 33 shots, he saved 30 of them, so a really solid performance here from Smith. Chippewas took that face off, gets wrapped around. Bolger now battling for it with two Timberwolves. Lansuki comes out with it now, tries to wrap it around to Wadge. Wadge can't manage to get it out of the zone as Naraki holds that line strong. Back over to Hensley. Hensley walks out. He rips a very weak shot that I believe rolled off the toe of his stick as Colin Smith has to make a nice save there, battling for it out front. Smith can't seem to get in position there, but the Chippewa defense came through once again and knocks that one to the outside. Keegan Moore lays the body on Stutzman, keeping him off the puck. Picked up there by the defenseman. Out front is Hensley, he tries to make a move. That one rings off the post. And we have a stoppage of play here. I believe the net came off. Yep, it's very, it's only off by a few inches, but it's definitely off the position it's supposed to be at. But. I mean, what a scramble that was. Colin Smith just could not seem to find the puck. He was moving left and right. Finally got in position. It looks like he might have gotten slightly injured on the play as he has his glove off kind of favoring his blocker hand. But it looks like he's going to stay in this one with 5.26 remaining here in this third period. Chippewas still have that demanding four goals, 7-3 to three lead. At first I thought that was maybe the main issue because he kind of bent over and slowly skated back to the net, but it, the net was off, but good to see him being all right. St. Andre taking this face off for the Chippewas. Lost it though, Timberwolves come out with it as they try a pass picked off by Hayes. Hayes tries to connect there with St. Andre as the Chippewas barely stay on side. He's got Sutherland, Sutherland catches the pass, he rips a shot. Big save there by Reed with the pad stack. Sutherland with it, he gets it back up to Gabe Smith. Smith with it now, Sutherland battling for it in the center. S Sutherland gets knocked down in the slot area and we have a stoppage of play here as I believe the net is off once again. Yeah, Sutherland one of the calls, he was taken down in front there. Looked like he kind of got held kind of high up, but no call there from the officials. 5.01 remaining here in the third period. Dalton Sutherland, another great chance for him to try to get that 300th point, but a great save by the, by the Northwood goaltender there in the pad stack to deny his shot. Timberwolves win that face off, and Justin LaRue will carry this one all the way down into the Chippewa zone as he tries a pass out front. Can't get it there as they try the wraparound once again. Chippewa defense shuts them down. St. Andre with it now. He moves it around his net. Picked up on the other side by Smith. Smith moves it up to Tarasi. Tarasi's got time and space. He makes a move around Carter. He'll connect with St. Andre as Sullen has to stay on side with him. Sullen nearly connects with the pass, but it's knocked away there by Sleeper, but it's picked up by Tarasi. Tarasi tries a pass out front blindly, but no, one, no Chippewa was in sight there. And now we have a two-on-one heading back into the Chippewa zone. LaRue rips a shot. Another nice, easy glove save for Colin Smith, and he'll hang on to it with 4.19 to go here in the third. Sutherland, so close once again. Yeah, and he might only get one or two more shots at it, considering there's only four minutes left in this one. Face-off will be to the right of Colin Smith here. 4.19 left in the third. Chippewa's. Still leading seven to three, only one goal this period as another shot comes in 
I believe that was by number four, Dundor, and Smith once again makes a glove save. Of another face off to the right of Smith, 416 left now in this one. Timberwolves win it back to Dundor again, another shot opportunity tipped by Carter goes wide. Timberwolves unable to hold the zone as Laporte misses it. He actually slacks on a little bit as he thought Sleeper was gonna come get it. Porzonic rushes back. He's forcing a lot of pressure now. Jeanette's coming in to help out. Battling for it behind the net now is Sleeper and Jeanette. Sleeper makes his way about around Jeanette and Simon Sell. We have a three on two heading into the Chippewa zone. McCarthy with it now on the outside. He's forced to stop and cut back as he gets pinned to the boards by Brennan Martin. Simon Selly now battling with Dundor behind the net. Dundor keeping the possession though, but Simon Selly really wasting time back there, holding them up against the boards. Porzanic comes out with it as the puck spit out front. He'll connect with Jeanette in the neutral zone. Jeanette with it now. He gets a, let a big hit on him by Sleeper. Doesn't go fully down, just kind of drops to a knee, loses the stick, but he'll go get it and be all right. Chris Martin connects with the pass to Jeanette in the high slot area of his own zone. Jeanette will loop around, just kind of back up into his own zone and try to cross ice pass over to Martin. Brennan Martin with it now. He moves around 3-10 to go in this game. Chippewa still up 7-3. Brennan Martin with it now. He moves in. He makes a move there, but it gets pushed to the outside. LaRue intercepts that one. Simon Silly racing to the puck. He picks it up at the point and will just send it back deep. McComas with it now. He's got it behind that. Tries to pass out from it. No one but a Timberwolf there, and that Timberwolf will just send it right out of play. I believe that was the... The defenseman Budnick there setting that one out of play. So 2.50 to go here in this final period of play. Chippewa is still up 7-3 to three here. It'll be Fazio, Thomas, and Agnello out there for the Chippewa offense as well as Bolger and Linsuki on defense here. Puck is dropped and the Chippewa has actually won the draw but picked up by the Timberwolves and Dundor's coming in with LaRue. He launches a long range shot there that Colin Smith will just redirect up and out of play. So we have another stoppage here. The play will remain in the Chippewa zone. He'll be to the right of Colin Smith. It'll be Engstrom going up against Fazio here as the Timberwolves come out with this one off the faceoff. Bolger picks it up behind his own net, tries to connect with Thomas, but it gets intercepted there by the, by the Timberwolves, excuse me. Engstrom with it behind his own behind the Chippewa net. He tries to pass out front, knocked back by Colin Smith. Thomas with it now in the corner. He'll pass it over, try to get it over to Bolger at least, and Engstrom's there to intercept it and try a pass out front. Meraki's able to hold it in, Lansuki moves his hand all the way down to ice level and paws it out of the zone where it was picked up by Agnello and they'll get whistled for the hand pass there. 2.13 left here in the third 7-3 Chippewas. Pretty fair to say at this point I would give the Chippewas a victory and a sweep over Northwood so most likely going to 15-9 and one on the season and setting up a big weekend next weekend against the number one, two team in the North, the University of Michigan Wolverines. Chippewas win this face off. Wadge with it now as Laporte actually forces him back into his zone. Wadge will leave it for Bolger. Bolger with it in the corner. He just sauces it out to the neutral zone where it gets sent right back in by Gunsel. Lansuki with it behind his own net. He should just sit there until he's forced out. Just take as much time as you can off as two Timberwolves now Pressure him and he has to make a pass out to Wadge. Wadge will just flick it right out into the neutral zone where McComas is, and McComas will try to send it further into the Timberwolves zone. Bolger has that at the red line. He'll just dump it in. He'll go off for a change. Smith and Hayes come out on defense for the Chippewas. McComas lays a hit on the sideboards. Back over to Wadge at the slot area, taken away there by the Timberwolves. Timberwolves coming in three on three, coming into the Central Michigan zone as. Engstrom gets caught offside, so we'll have another stoppage of play here with 1.23 to go in the final period of play. We'll see if the Chippewas can maybe get one more here to get that five goal differential in this one. It's going to be close with a minute 23 left, though. And with the fourth line currently out with a minute 20 left, you have to think that top line is going to come out one last time to finish off this game. Smith with it now deep in his defensive zone. He tries to stretch pass out to McComas, but it goes right past him, but it will not be good enough for it will not be good enough for an icing as Sutherland is back out on the ice. 
It'll be Owen coming in. He tries to peel towards that odd angle shot there. Skate saved by Colin Smith. Sullen with it deep in his own zone. Tries to pass, but whiffs on it, but regains possession. Cross ice pass out to McComas. He skates through the neutral zone. Sullen coming down quickly. McComas going around the net. Almost looked like he was going to go for the wraparound, but peeled away. Tries a cross ice pass over to St. Andre, but unable to get it. St. Andre tries to pass out front, but Sullen couldn't handle it. Shot goes wide there by Chris Martin. 32 seconds remaining in this game as the Timberwolves finally get it out of their zone. Brennan Martin with it at the red line. He'll re-enter the zone. He's got St. Andre and Sutherland in there with him. Picked off by the Timberwolves and St. Andre held the zone. Picked off there by Hensley. Hensley thought he had a forward with him, but Stutzman tripped on his own blue line and it went down and was unable to pick up the pass. Chippewas with it, nine seconds remaining in this game. We have one last chance for the Chippewas to get this fifth goal they need. Sullen with it now in the high slot area. He tries to pass it over to Taraski, unable to get a shot off. Sullen tries one last time, and the buzzer will sound, and the Chippewas will take this one 7-3 to three and be happy with it. Exactly. They got the <laughs> win. Sullen was trying to get that 300 there near the end, but the most important part is the Chippewas do win this game 7-3. to three. Sutherland's got at least four more games on the season to pick up that 300th point so I'm sure he'll find it eventually in this season just has to wait one more weekend but the Chippewas do get the win seven to three yeah the Chippewas played phenomenal hockey in that I mean they really racked up shots I mean they finally won a game in the shot column I believe am I correct I know you had the shot how they didn't no they didn't. <laughs> They ended up losing that by four. They only had oh, third, man. excuse me, by three. They only ended up with six shots in that third period. Well, they dominated early. It was a more evenly matched second period. And then, yeah, just their time-consuming hockey was the reason why they weren't able to win the shot column once again. But they won in the statistic that matters, and that's goals you put up on the board. Uh, once again, I mean, we had some – we had a – Goal scorer that doesn't score a whole lot. I mean, Lansuki managed to pick up two goals on the night. He scored the fourth and the seventh goal there. Uh, Jeanette managed to pick up a goal, two by St. Andre, as well as two from Taraski. So we had three Chippewas double up in goals tonight, have multi-point nights for the Chippewas. So, I mean, great night for the Chippewa offense. Great Chippewa goaltending and defense tonight. I mean, all three goals that were scored on Colin Smith were well earned by the Timberwolves. I mean, just overall great team win, much different than what we saw last weekend. Yeah, and Colin Smith had the 923 save percentage, so really fantastic game. And if we're going to give a player the game out, I'm going to go with the third stringer, Colin Smith, stepping up big, saw 39 shots, saved 36 of them. A really good job by Colin Smith. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's appearing in just a mere – I mean, he's a, he, this is his third game that he's appeared in. He, the other two were starts – against Davenport going all the way back to the beginning of the first semester. And then he also played on the last game of the semester against the University of Michigan Flint, picking up wins there as well. So in his three games played, he is now 3-0. and So, I mean, yeah, great game by Colin Smith. Again, having that 923 state percentage. But I'm going to say it one more time, great team win for the Chippewas. I mean, had some trouble in the beginning of the game with taking some bad penalties, but... You know, the Timberwolves were only able to capitalize on one of them, just like last night. The one goal they scored was on the power play on the first penalty that the Chippewas took. That was the same story tonight. But, yeah, great win by the Chippewas. There should be some good momentum heading into next week. Yeah, next weekend's the big thing on the Chippewas' mind now. Two big games against the number two team in the north, the University of Michigan Wolverines. They should be some good games. We're home Friday night at 9.30. Puck drop's probably going to be closer to 10. It's also senior night for the Chippewas. Quite a few seniors on this team. And then we're at Arctic Edge in Canton on Saturday night. Uh, for the second game of that weekend series. It's going to be a big weekend for the Chippewas. The goal, I think, is at least to get one win. If they can get two, that's fantastic. We'll see how they come out and play next weekend. Once again, thank you for listening to the broadcast today. For myself, Jared Nyland, broadcast partner here, Nick Blazer. And that will do it here for Mount Pleasant. We'll be back next Friday night, 9.30 p.m. start time. Probably going to end up closer to 10 with a D2 game and warm-ups beforehand. So we'll see you then. Thanks again for listening.